Oh, it's a lot of smiles for Counter Logic Gaming. Question coming into this is does Lynx Nidalee get banned along with already the AP champions in mid that we see? A 9 1 and 7 game on that yesterday. Okay. So, Annie, as far as support bans, is something that I am uh, okay with. You know, I wouldn't like to target Aphromoo, but Annie right now is just right. ridiculously strong. The initiation that she brings to a team from that support role is huge. So we'll see here. Uh, Aphromoo doesn't want to play against Morgana either. So they don't want Bunny Fufu to get the roaming bindings off. Yep, good call. Like we said, we saw that from him yesterday. Callista being taken out. So none of that nonsense for double lift. He had that versus Impulse in week two. It will be the Lissandra pickup, however, to start this one off for Conlogic Gaming. And so the Jarvan's uh, banned out, but the Nar is left up. So not really as scared of the champion in mm -hmm. general. And they've already banned out half of the combos. So CLG really very low priority on Nar. Right. I really like the early lock-ins of Lissandra again. As we said yesterday, very flexible champion. Not only as far as lanes that she can go, but also teams that she can fit in. Pretty much works with everything. Same could be said for Corky here for Gravity. Yeah. You know, could go to many different lanes as well. That's true. We've seen it go into Keen quite a few times. And actually, the past two games for him, that Lissandra, actually the only other time that Counter Logic Gaming has been able to pick it. It's been banned every other game. And the first time they played it, it went to Link. So, like you said, it could actually go anywhere without priority. Yeah. The other thing I like from Gravity here, taking away the Vi from Smithy. Anytime you mm. do have a jungler recently coming back from retirement, their champion pool usually a bit smaller. Uh, so now we get to see some more from Smithy, see what else he has in there, rather than just going back to Vi over and over again. Yeah. Plus, St. Vicious Ooh. and Gravity used it to great effect. That was one of their biggest wins, you know, taking down yeah. Cloud9 using that Vi and dive strategy. Keen very famous for his hmm. ergot, by the way, in solo queues. So he's playing to the crowd so as his cop. A blitz pickup would probably mean a thresh on the other side. Got to have those hooks for Aphromu. Yeah. So CLG locking in the AD carry that double F feels safest on when facing Vi. Sivir, you can actually spell shield the ultimate. Feels great if you're the AD carry. <laughs> However, terrible if you are the Vi player. And with Morgana being banned out, Double Lift will be relying on his own reaction speed, which is amazing, by the way. His Sivir spell shields are very, very impressive. Yeah. Not only will he almost always block a spell, but he blocks specific spells, even in team fights, saving it, you know, taking something that's just damage and saving it for the actual CC spells to hit. So we'll see how well he can actually time that. I'm hold you if that. he can actually block the correct uh, <laughs> spell, which would be Fi Ultimate, of course. No, or Aurelia's done. And then when he actually times it right, he takes a Zephyr from Janna, and then it's gone. <laughs> he just gets <laughs> hit by Rocket the is going to yeah, ruin right? his day. Well, right now, they definitely have a team that wants to ruin Doublelift's day. Could have that Vi and Aurelia diving in. So what did they round out the comp with? We could, like we said, still have a top lane to be picked here for Zion Spartan. Mm -hmm. Top lane could we still need be support. picked. Uh, they are, Gravity really are doing a good job with the early Corky pick, not giving away too much here. It could go to AD carry, in which case Double F will be fine with that as well, because in lane, Spell Shield really strong against Corky. Um, but it could, as we said, yeah. be a mid lane Corky. Not be a bad lane to go up against. Easily use the Spell Shield for the Foss Bombs and not have to worry about a hook or someone grabbing you. Alistar Ezreal. So we talked about oh. that deep champion pool. Huh? Okay. I was like, wait, there's two AD. Oh. <laughs> yeah, we'll raise you a double AD composition Very here. Very cool. I don't think we've had a quadra AD comp fight. No. In the North American LCS. No, we haven't. In any season. So we may get our first chance here if comp decides to go with Caitlyn or something in the, in the works. But Aphromoo, I really do like this, especially when they're running a double AD, and one of those ADs is Sivir. The extra speed for an Alistar is extremely impressive, especially when you do have Lissandra as well. So this CLG high-speed comp uh, looks very, very scary. It reminds me, uh, unfortunately, they don't have the Orianna, but right. I was thinking of the Cowball as soon as he locked it in uh -huh. in, his, in his engagement. So we still may see Afro going very hard on these for some flash pulverizes to get the team started. 
Could have the Azir going over to Keen. He will lock that in. So Link won't have too much trouble staying safe with the Mystic shots, but Keen will have to be dodging back and forth. So the comms are locked in. Cool stuff from Chronologic Gaming to bring a little bit of flavor into the week, and as well as Gravity putting their composition that they want together. Thought Cop was playing Azir there for a second. Would have loved it. <laughs> yeah, both, uh, both Keen and Phoenix, the two mid laners, you know, with the organization formerly known as Curse. Mm -hmm. Curse Academy and Curse, the actual team, both fairly well versed in Azir play. We'll see if he can actually, if that Azir wall is enough to stop the dive. Azir plus Janna is incredible anti-dive. It's such good peel. Uh, we'll see if they can actually make good use of it because there's so much potential to spread out CLG, you know, and pick them apart here. If you have double knockbacks like that, uh, we'll see how Aframu is able to weave his way through everything. Well, the coach is approaching. Good luck to each of you gentlemen and the teams as they are now out of control of whatever happens. They now leave it up to the players. A very intense moment. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> I've done my work. It's up to you. As we head on to the Rift, tweet hashtag CLG win or hashtag GV win so we can see who you, the fans think will be ending the week with a victory out of these two teams. You can see the comps on your screen. And we're just about to get to the rift. Everybody in the crowd, uh, very much ready. Get back to their seats for Counter Logic Gaming versus Gravity. Yeah, and St. Vicious versus his original team that he was kicked off. Dun, Memor dun, dun. Memories, Kobe? Yep. Memory. <laughs> Memories. Actually, St. did have technically a stint on the team that developed into TSM. So mm -hmm. maybe, maybe. Historians will consider him originally a TSM. Semantics, I say, semantics. <laughs> so looking at the matchup against Hauntzer, Zion believes that proactive approach to the game he has is what sets him apart from other more passive top laners. I don't think he's the player that will kind of be like, I need jungle pressure, I can dictate the flow of the game, and this is what I need, this is what I'm going to do, and this is how we're going to win. Whereas I see myself as a kind of player that can really be like, this is what I need, this is what I'm going to do to win, and this is how we're going to win, and it's going to happen, and it does happen. And that's what, that's what I feel like not only haunts but a lot of top laners lack. <laughs> and it does happen. That's what he said. Yeah. Not a lot of specifics there, but basically Zan saying, I'm a strong, independent top laner. I don't need no jungle. <laughs> I guess not. We will see, though. Hopefully it doesn't go awry for it, but this game, because he just put himself on the soapbox here, coming in against Gravity. Hauntzer on Aurelia. Zion Spartan should be able to stay safe on the Sandra. Believe me, we'll keep an eye on that lane. Alpha Moon, double lift. Looks like they're going to start off to try and get an early level two, but it doesn't look like Gravity wants to match up that lane anyways. Yeah. Uh, Cop has always been fairly outspoken about, you know, not really enjoying that laning phase. And now that he doesn't have a special by his side, uh, they do not want to take it. Corky Janna, as we said, you know, not going to really like laning against the spell shield. So Sivir, there are multiple ways that Sivir, you know, can gain control of a lane. If you do go with a, this side camp, um, then you can actually go your early points in boomerang and spell shield and just have really good trading power. Mm -hmm. Um, or, you know, you can start your W uh, and you just shove the lane very quickly. Since he's going into a lane without opponents, Ooh. gonna grab that boomerang for the extra CS that he can grab out of range. Meanwhile, Bunny Fufu starts the roam first as far as support. Jenna heading straight down mid lane. He doesn't have that hard CC like, like the Morgana would to really affect the mid lane, but he'll make an attempt here to try and get something out of Link. A little zoning potential. You know, I was wondering, Kobe, if Bunny Fufu would again go for the mid lane. We saw this uh, yesterday on Morgana, and even w without having hard crowd control, he just heads in there and okay. just trying to deter Link. Successfully deter denied three CS there. Perfect. All three of those minions went down. Oh, uh, actually, no. Never mind. He only denied one. <laughs> it was the thought that Link got that He got that mystic shot off to grab one. Two, 13 to 10 right now, but still cleaning up. So looking at St. Vicious, now that we just saw Bunny Fufu kind of going for a gank, how does he kind of play these lanes? Because each one can jump 
dash or he's going to get headbutted. Does he just go for six and try to go for alts? Well, so the thing is, it's a lane swap, so it completely changes the way, you mm -hmm. know, jungle is played. Right now, Gravity are going with the double jungle, whereas CLG going with a little bit more greedy route where they have their top laner soak that experience. Saw it pay off there for Cloud9. This time, uh, Gravity are actually bringing the double jungle, all four members, up to the top side. Zahn has preemptively placed this ward. Very smart. Uh, doesn't want to get dove mm. very early. He is on a bit squishier champion. Lissandra relies on her immunity spells, both the ultimate and the Zanyas when she gets it for her defenses. Her defensive stats are not very high. Uh, and this early on, uh, very difficult yeah. for her to make use of the control that comes in her kit. So he's going to just walk away from that one. Yep, he must have seen last game. <laughs> sure of the gank top lane. He knows what's coming. Walking over Ward himself, though. This is actually not a good position he's pinched himself into. He has the wall to get over. Three levels. Ooh. Oh, no! He face plants into two of the team. Bunny Fufu reads it with the monsoon. Keen is in with shifting sands. Is it enough? It is not. Got to be careful to overdive those. So gravity going to hold on to their summoners this time. Only burning ignite. They did get the flash out of Zion Spartan, mm -hmm. who spent a bit too much time, honestly, on the gravity side of the map. Uh, everything that was sort aggressive. of north of the mid lane mm -hmm. does turn into gravity side since their duo is up top. Uh, and Zion, uh, a little bit too long on enemy territory, but only cost him his flash. Doesn't actually end up going down. So not too detrimental. Now that he's trying to head back here uh, and soak up some more minions, it looks like like Cop actually has the wave pushing against him, so Zion heading up there is going to be risky. He's going to need jungle support to actually make that crash against the turret and get it reset, or else he will be very vulnerable. Has not brought uh, extra wards, by the way, so it's just the trinket that he's laying down. Ooh. That, did I talk about the spell you, shield accuracy? That was good. Yep. The stun right there, which would have been just a slow, but still. <laughs> good call. I like it. Clarifying. But yeah, you were right. Double lift goes in. Doesn't deny the damage of Blade Surge, but die denies the slow that would have added even more damage. Easily farming these ones out. As the turret not ramping up for minion shots, so you can get the method to that madness down. And we're just six minutes in here. People have voted and spoken 85 to 15 percent. And I do want to call out what they just did, even though it was a very simple move from CLG. Smithy heads up top with his top laner when the wave is not in their control. They get to crash against the turret, and now he leaves him all by his lonesome. Now, how actually, how difficult is that for a jungler? Because you can see it, but what if you don't have any camps in the top side of the jungler? You're just wasting time and hoping that you get the counter gank? Uh, you know, his priority is the wave control, so okay. getting the minions to bounce back. Uh, not too difficult. They do have to always keep tabs, as you do in lane swaps, mm -hmm. of both the enemy jungler as well as the enemy support, because you get a lot of roaming. Jenna's not as high as a, uh, high of impact as Alstar is when he's roaming, so uh, quite a bit less threat there. Plus, she is showing the bottom lane as the top and support try to duo here. Aurelia going to make use of the shield to try and pick up CS. He'll just be dashing in and out with yeah. his Q, hoping to avoid damage from double lift as he tries to pick some up. We have McSmithy coming down to the bottom lane. Cop. Ooh, good damage. Zion Spartan was kind of playing the no-look claw. Uh-huh. Cop not fooled. No. Able to land the big one very easily. You can see the end location of the claw. BM. That's just good gameplay right there, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Zion very frustrated. He's got to teleport, but I don't know if he's going to miss too much. No, Cop's starting to push it a bit, so he may have to teleport back up there. Cop really, you can see that they do not want to match that lane up. We've seen Bunny Fufu go to the bottom lane with Haunter for the 2v2 matchup, so he can stay up there by himself. Uh huh. I mean, I actually would like to see the matchup because I think Alistar versus Janna... <laughs> So Link gets him back. Cop stops Zion's retreat. Yep. <laughs> Link's, Link one-ups him with the cross map. Blue pill interrupt. Good play there once again. Uh, but yeah, I do like the test of Alistar versus Janet. Can you get off your uh, tornado quick enough? <laughs> 
He used to be one of the features that threw Alistar off the map into the air if you caught a mid-headbutt. It was fantastic. It's very scary Strive as Janna if you're not able to get that off. Yeah, it is. You get crushed. Forced to shield yourself, and then everybody runs scared for the hills. Looks like CLG getting what they want out of this top turret. A little bit more gold once they grab that down. And we already see Haunter back, and he knows it's falling. And it looks like Bunny Fufu -Foo and Cop will be there to soak up the rest. Yeah, but they're just too slow. CLG are the ones. They hit their point for a BF7 for us, so double lift. Uh, gets the back on the correct gold amount, also adds in boots, and they get up there quicker. So he used the move speed from his boots, BF Sword, oh. first recall. So it's always CLG so far making the first moves and Gravity trying to react. So far, it nets CLG a turret. Also, Link doing his best to help out with the side wave control. We saw that ultimate go wide. Even against Azir here, CLG grouping up and trying to get some early damage done. Very difficult against Janna though, shielding turret. Monster back to lane. I don't think he's gonna get anything too bad. He could be teleported behind, but CLG is actually not on the move for that. And Zion Spartan, he's already taken the long walk down. Janna is there for Keen, and they know Aphromu is just off on the side. So they play this one safe, and nothing comes out of the mid lane. It's such, again, once, such a beautiful early game setup by CLG. They make the first early recall. They're the ones who get the jump on the turret. They also use that time to lay down a ridiculous string of wards all through to both sides of Gravity Jungle. Full vision of every move that St. Vicious makes just in time when St. hits six and he has the huge threat of the Vi ultimate. So they know where the Vi ultimate is going. Zion now level six does have his own immunity that he can use if St. decides to try a long distance ultimate. And he is heading down towards the bottom side. Interesting here. Kind of Aphromu resorting back to his not really heading for Sightstone. Smithy grabs that. But they still have that ward coverage, so it's very much communicated on the team that it's up to Smithy to get a lot of those wards down. It hasn't helped this, though. Gravity's able to push up a little bit past that ward line as it dies, as it was swept out, and they grab themselves first dragon to the game. Yep. He actually walked by and saw the ward timeout. Mm -hmm. Vi is extremely good at taking the early dragon. Uh-oh, it didn't expect that much damage on the other end of the attack. The claw goes out, and it is going to be the finisher coming in from McSmithy. Great job by Counter Logic Gaming. So they got the, the pick and the kill, but dragon's already gone. Saint too close to the horns. We talked about these plays. They won. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, you did flash too. But OK, did. well. He was flashing because he probably thought there was another Q coming from Lee Sin. That's true. Did, maybe didn't ha quite have the timing down there. To us, it looked like he didn't, right? But, but basically... But you're in that, you're in the end of the moment. Basically, what we're saying is, Aphromu <laughs> finally makes a mistake. <laughs> One of the rare occasions where we actually see him uh, let somebody live. Oh, Aphromu, I thought he got kicked. Aphromu has picked too many... Oh, was that Smithy then? I, think I take it back, I Aphromu. Think Smithy kicked him over the wall. <laughs> I should have known that. <laughs> Aphromoo would never do such a thing. He actually used his W to get in range and start the whole thing off. Boom. You must be correct. <laughs> Good call, Riv. Aphromoo, still immaculate play. <laughs> Smithy's the, the, dirty, uh, the dirty one who lets St. live. And we said he was most improved. Sheesh. <laughs> 12 minutes on this. It's still CLG with that turret lead, which means their map control can keep flooding into the side of gravity, which they've kind of started to push back on a bit. Dragon in their favor came of it, but they weren't really able to activate too much after that. Counter Logic Gaming wanted more, and they were able to come up with that kill. Let's see what happens. They just want more aggression on the map right now. Scuttle Crab is theirs, and they're just waiting for Gravity to become even on the map again. They can't see him. Slowing down the game. All right, so CLG bring all their forces mid to the last standing outer turret here. Jenna plus Azir, very, very difficult to shove in on, though. They quickly swing down to just lay down their wards. Pink wards on both sides of the mid lane here. Plus, Link is on that Ezreal, so he is fine just farming here. Stacking up his tier. Going to get his mana mune combined fairly soon here. Nope. Team again, CLG looking for to create their picks. Now they actually have to just pretty much run out of the fog of war. They don't have the bindings to work with this time. 
making it work only a few times so far, missing one of those kills. But Gravity now knows they have to play quite safe. I wonder how Keen is going to take to these fights. Obviously doing a lot of damage here, but initially setting out his, sh Oopsie. his soldiers. Oh. They're going to be diving everywhere, so he's going to have to have the right movement to hit his targets here. It's going to be tough against CLG's squad. Send Zion the Frost Queen back to base immediately. Taking advantage of the long-range ward clearing yep. abilities of Azir as well. Soldier attacks do count. Basically, this is the main point for gravity to hold on here. Wave clear of Azir plus the turret shielding of Janna should mean that they can hold on fairly well. They just have to worry about, once again, a little roaming potential here. Sivir, anytime you're facing this team, uh, especially if they have an Alistar on the side, uh, that can catch anybody out of position. It's double lift plus Afro Mu can clean someone up as they swing between defense of secondary side lane turrets and the mid lane point. Looks like this one could be good. Aframu has great positioning here to get in onto Cop. Valkyrie's there, but... Can he interrupt put it by, Valkyrie? Yeah, I was going to say, get the perfect pulverize. So he decides not to. Maybe not enough vision on the rest of the map just yet. CLG is going to grab ward control here in the river. Two minutes on Dragon, so that's not much pressure that they need to deliver anywhere else. And Gravity is just kind of allowing waves to flow into them. Comp's getting the farm that he wants right now. He actually did all right in that free lane by himself, since Zion Spartan did not have the greatest early engage towards that mid lane. But Gravity, they're holding strong right now as CLG continues to put on the pressure. And they actually, you know, got a decent amount of money onto Aurelia, which is key for them. They want to get Hanser to his Trinity Force. Uh, they already have one on Cop, so Aurelia plus Corky. We always go over this, the mid-game spike of those yep. two, uh, just because of especially the itemization. Uh, once they can get double Trinity Force, uh, they should be good to go. They can still make moves. Yes, they are behind, but it's just, you know, that turret advantage and the first blood advantage. Gravity not panicking here. Just keeping up defensive vision and now finally actually making an incursion into CLG yep. territory. Red side prepped for the second dragon. 50 seconds is a fairly good window for them. All those wards leading up to it. Let's see if Saint can also secure dragon control. Remember, it's 75 seconds once you kill the uh, crab, so you want to get that thing. About a minute, maybe a little bit right. less than a minute uh, before the dragon will spawn so that you have it up for that, uh, the dance that always occurs <laughs> right before it. So when this dance occurs, looking at this really slippery team of CLG, what is kind of the picture-perfect fight for gravity if this starts off? Uh, it's actually, the picture-perfect fight is actually probably not around dragon. Okay. Uh, so we'll have to see. Uh, I think a lot of it hinges, as we said, on the Janna and Azir ultimate use. So Keen and Bunny Fufu, we'll see what sort of mm -hmm. knockback they can they can achieve with those two ults. St. Vicious probably going to be targeting uh, Link with his ultimate. He has double ties of spell shield. Link also has a built-in arcane shift. Right. And Zion's got his own immunity. So the options are fairly limited for St. Vicious. He's going to have to time it correctly. Uh, Zion does not, by the way, you know, Habazanya's obviously, he's gone with the early Rod of Ages, similar to Quas. Uh, so, if he uses his ultimate elsewhere, then, you know, Saint opens up to more options. But here we go. They guess like they do want to contest it. Teleport comes in. Teleport, not going to be for the Dragon. It's going to be for the cleanup on the fight. They get Zion Spartan. Frozen Tomb on himself. He will eventually go down. That's Keen picking up a kill. Great to get it on the mid laner to keep him and get him going. And it's going to be nice. Emperor's Divide out! True shot barrage for the entire team, and Link is just spitting out damage from the back line. One more shot on the St. Vicious, but nobody can get in range. Bunny Fufu throws himself in front oh, of a Link. Mystic shot to save it, and Link continues with the Sheen. Now Manamune finished, and he is not done. Yeah, he's done. He's going to back off after putting out some big deeps in that fight. Yeah, pretty well well played fight right there. Let's see what uh, CLG can actually get off of it. Just a one for tr one for trade. Mm -hmm. CLG already took the dragon, so they do have that first six percent bonus. Looks like CLG, they're actually going to pressure the mid is their choice. So everybody's on that turret by the way right now. Double this free farming, but it looks like they are going to get that turret as a reward. 
And that's nice for CLG as well. Doublelift can still be free farming. They have an AD carry somewhat mid to be taken down turret. So he is in the absolute perfect environment that so, he loves to live in. Right here, the key is that CLG completely split. You can see Link went up the long route above the Dragon Pit. Mm -hmm. He was cut off from the rest of the team. So St. Vicious actually, he did something where he was trying to catch Zion before Zion could get his ultimate off very quickly going into the Vi ultimate. Uh, but Zion obviously did get his off. There's the Aphromoo plus double lift combo, where Aphromoo goes in for the knockup and double lift shoots his boomerang straight across everyone. As you mentioned, the entire time, uh, Link was spitting out damage. He had Jeez. that Trinity Force completed for his Ezreal. Um, but really, uh, Saint trying to combo Zion before Zion had enough time to get off his ultimate. Because Zion built that Rod of Ages and he has his extra health, he actually survived long enough to get it off on himself. Just a squeak. Got that bit of AoE damage as well as the yeah. time for the rest of the team to regroup. Since Link was starting the fight on the other side, they needed that little bit of extra time to regroup. And, you know, Aphromoo goes in for the re-engage. Oh, Zion Spartan going in hard here. Not afraid to make plays. He just actually comes back from the grave to repay that favor now to Hauntzer. And it looks like they may get the push. They want on this. He flashes for the hit. That's going to put Aphromoo in range. And now we're starting to see this transition catch potential CLG's bringing to the table with this comp. Yep, there it is. Link also with red buff here. Ezreal with red buff. One of the most annoying things in the game. Yeah. Let's see where they pressure next. Headed straight mid, Aphromoo coming in hot. Oh, gets Emperor's Divided oh! back from every angle. Keen couldn't even look that many ways. So Got, a, a Zero Wall, oh, a Zero Wall blocks many, many things, but it does not <laughs> block projectile. Nope. CLG, beautiful, highly accurate skill shots from both Link and Double Lift after the Aphromoo, beautiful setup. That's one thing we've been seeing not consistently from CLG, but they have those spurts. When they want to take something back, they get so much more, and they take it cleanly. A lot of that looked great, and they didn't overextend. The again. Why he wouldn't he? More. Oh! Goes in for another one. The ward early deters Cop from the back. They're going to go ahead and just give this one over to Link. Make All that right. nice and easy. The shield coming from Smithy right. so he can get the assist. Well played. Okay, Gravity, they're making a counterplay here. It's gotta Commitment happen. bottom. This is definitely St. Vicious call. Okay, everybody, there's too many people staying behind Barons. Saint should actually swing around to the other side. Those back spikes do a ridiculous amount of damage. Oh, it's and he's going to die from it. Oh. He died. <laughs> he did get hit that, from Link's ulti, though. That attack goes farther than the den. It attacks outside and behind it. Very painful. If there are more people behind Baron and the spikes are coming out, it's a bad spot to be in. But... <laughs> He did not get tagged by Link's ultimate. Very, very close there. I don't think Link got a kill for that. And he was executed by Baron. 21 minutes in, the Muramana is finished. That is insane for Link. Yeah, he's 4-0 on Ezreal <laughs> with fully early. charged up. This is a ridiculous power spike. Not to mention they're the team with Sivir. Oh, okay, God. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Derp, derp, derp. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's Haunter now! Smithy takes it! Resonating Strike, and he slows him. That's the cripple, but Haunter... But he hits it, Rim. He knows what to do. Gotta get He's it. gonna hit it. He's gotta hit the Q. Oh, oh he hit it! <laughs> Everybody thought he wouldn't. Takes him down. That was great. That was Standing great. ovation right there. I saw it. People are loving it. All right, CLG, customary, really good early game. Actually, really good mid game so far. Let's see if they end it cleanly, though. If they end it cleanly, we can start saying Golden Age. If not, All right. All right. It's, it's, it's a little rusted. Right, but down. it's still looking shiny for now. <laughs> BF Sword onto Link. Already Lucidities. Obviously, he's trying to get more damage out. And he is just, nobody can stand toe to toe with him this game. We've actually had that happen for our past two games. Last time, it was balls. It was just far and beyond gone powerful. And let's see, we'll have it for game three. Link right now controlling it for everybody. And it's really only <laughs> the kills onto X Smithy. Those guys are having a great game. All right, so Dragon, 20 seconds left. That should easily be CLGs. They can ward up this entire side. Yep. And Gravity are going to have to hug turrets at this point. They're trying a little bit of defensive warding uh, to see if there are any opportunities to catch somebody out away from the rest of the squad. 
Now that Gravity, CCLG are actually grouped for this dragon, they should probably back off. Even being out in the, this close to it is dangerous. Jeez. This is a team with Sivir, a super fed Ezreal, and a Lissandra. He's not afraid to go over the wall. They're going for it, though. Oh, that was St. Vicious. That wasn't the ultimate. He did flash over, though. Yeah, he got popped out and knocked out. Now, it's going to be Zion Spartan in a frozen tube again. The flash entry. Actually, that was just a claw entry. And they start trying to tear gravity apart here. They've already lost two, though. Zion and Aphra who fall. That's the tank line. Everybody else here, they can't really fend for the center. That's the double kill for Cobb coming in as Keen flies over the wall with Flash and Emperor's Divide to continue the fight. They'll try to go for Xmithy. I believe that's going to be Haunter's job as the rest of the team heads for Dragon. That was just a really well played fight right there by Gravity. Oh, Smithy. Let's see if they can get it, though. Smithy's looking for the he's, steal. He's got nothing to lose. <laughs> he's totally going for this. No, he's not. Conscience, the, the, the angel on his shoulder said, just <laughs> don't do it. All right. Well, Gravity, really good job with their double training forces there. St. Vicious able to get the ultimate on Zion after he had already used the Lissandra ulti. Let's and some Spartan Azir play from Keen. Let's watch it from start to finish here. So Zion, he flanks behind them. He wants to guy by time for everybody to come in. Saint goes in to finish him off because he sees there's no immunity. And the Azir damage, both carries right here on the double AD carry team take multiple hits from both of the soldiers. Ooh. And then he goes in for the flash ulti. Huge, huge props to Keen. This champion, when played well, is ridiculously scary. That was a really nice fight. Considering Foss Bomb and the soldier attack are like the same size and mm -hmm. that hit everybody, they got all the damage they needed. Kind of Logic Gaming will look to not group up like that again. 25 minutes in, looking around at the inventories. That was Link's first death, but he's still quite far ahead here. 240 CS along with Double Lift's 250. They are the highest in the game here as they go to regain control of the map after a little bit of a mishap. It's something that we have been seeing throughout CLG's pretty consistent play. A little bit of strength here, and then a few mishaps. But it doesn't ever seem to really put them behind. They're able to repair that right, right back at it. Well, they still have, you know, vision control over both neutral objective sites. Right. Uh, so they still will have the ability to chase someone down if they actually find gravity split up. But man, gravity just so great team fighting right there. And Keen is definitely giving CLG pause. Make them reconsider their very aggressive moves. Zion Spartan with the flank around, maybe it was a little bit extended. Azir gets hit though, he's toast. That absolute 100 to zero there of Keen's health bar. They're gonna be able to take down St. Vicious as well. That's a seven, one and two link. Looking for a repeat KDA of yesterday almost. And he is just doing a great job on this Ezreal pick. The team feeling good. Looking good as well. Yeah, the patience right there. This is what constant ward control gives you. Since after the fight, as we said, they both still had uh, vision control over both neutral objective sites. COG, good job with the bait right there. And Keen had used everything in the last fight for his flash Azir ulti. So no escape for him. And really good shot there by Smithy to start it off. And Zion with the immediate follow-up. So pick works out for Team CLG, grab the Baron. They did lose a turret. Gravity did not yeah. sit idly by after Keen went down. They went and decided to train, or trade an extra turret. <laughs> Link making a good case for himself, I have to that, say. It, yeah, this is true. Also, yeah. that's, just a, that's just a fun quote to use in so many ways. All right, so Keen trying to get the soldiers in for vision right there, but COG, as we said, vision control, using it to their advantage to get the pick, and that's one of the squads, as we said so many times, the speed up and the ability for all of them to jump these walls. Very scary. That tomb looked painful. I didn't realize there's spikes inside that tomb she puts you in. That, that's, that's some stuff right there. Two dragons over to Gravity. They have been able to squeak those out while being pretty much pushed back into their base this entire game. One for CLG, and it's not going to come up for any time soon, so their focus here is to push the lanes. Now, after Moo is going to be, I was going to say sticking with double lift, but they make me a liar. And double lift's going to take the bottom lane by himself. Why not? With the Baron, they can start getting good pushes on these lanes and set up kind of a defensive wall right there across the bottom side of jungle. Yep, swinging over, gonna make use of the Baron buff. This should be pretty easy for them to siege mm -hmm. down. Uh, Gravity 
obviously want to fight at the inhibitor turret, which are much harder to deal with. Right. And we will see. Now, the turrets do penetrate armor, but they do not penetrate the ultimate of Alistar. Interesting. However, they were going against, you know, Azir and Janus, so <laughs> everybody else will have a hard time uh, following up on any sort of dive like Getting that. Getting to these turrets. However, with two ADs, once they do get to the turrets, they're going to be falling quite fast. Gravity doing their best to keep them at bay. Kind of logic gaming, that is, as they push on to inhibitors. Janna Azir doing their best yeah. to keep their turret healthy. As well as get some harass on. Now, the, the way to fight against barrened up teams nowadays, since the Baron buff lost its regen, he's getting that poke down uh, on those mages that cannot regenerate through lifesteal. So every poke that lands on yeah. Zion is really big. Here they go. They zone right in. Bully down the turret. It's almost dead. That last minion from the back. He's got it. Believe. Oh, the shield. Gets it to stay up. I think he can get it, though. This is going to be a tough one. Keen tries to prevent it from happening. One more shot, maybe. Oh, the shield again. <laughs> Man, what a tease. CLG is still trying to get in on this. It's one shot from Link here, though. <laughs> Why doesn't he hit it, then? Because it's scary to go into there. <laughs> yeah, right, they, they get it. Base is open. That means CLG is now invited to this one. Cop trying to do what he can on the outside. They still put wards down in their base just to deter gravity and give them something else to do. And All CLG right. says, we're happy with this. It'll probably come from the next push. Yeah, Baron falls off. Just in time, they decide to retreat. Inhibitor didn't go down for gravity, so that's something for them. They won't have to worry about the extra pressure of super minions on the long lane no. away from Baron, which is the scariest place for those to be coming in. Still, though, the entire map is a dangerous, dangerous field for gravity. If they misstep, the CLG squad will jump on yep. them very quickly. Dragon again secured. This is only two, though, by the way. We probably won't go to five dragons this game. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like that's in the cards. Probably a second Baron, though. It's been pretty impressive that CLG kind of creates this uh, environment for the team that they play against. It's very volatile, pick-oriented in the game. You almost can't walk into your own jungle. And we they've kind of been able to do it to every team, barring their loss that they had. But they definitely have the idea coming into this split, and teams can't seem to figure out how to get around it yet. Gravity did uh, have a very well-executed team fight once. Mm. Might be able to do it again. Blue buff secured for Keen is huge as far as controlling the waves and trying to fend them off. Uh, we'll see if they can make a successful inhibitor stand. See Keen's power. He actually doesn't have too much huge, huge damage. He went for Void after Morello Namakon. Well, putting in a little bit of that cooldown as well for attack speed on the soldiers. But nothing really that's probably going to change the minds of CLG here. The fight's going to have to be long for all that damage to get in. That's probably going to mean CLG already had their way with the fight. Pushing now again on an open inhibitor. This is a forced fight for gravity. They're going to try to flank. Yeah, they're going to use the gate to get around the side. There's a ward, though. It's really difficult for them to get onto Link, though. Aframu is playing Peeler right now, Bodyguard Alistar, rather than Dive In Alistar. Yeah. You can see him waiting around the AD carries, uh, looking to knock anyone back who decides to jump in now. You can't knock Violet or Ultimate, but you can knock away any follow-up. And Link. if St. Vicious goes solo and in deep into the lines... Ooh, Link taken down mid by himself. Painful. Yeah. <laughs> they don't have too much to work with. CLG is kind of trying to spread them thin here between mid and this bottom inhibitor. I think they're waiting for the fight. CLG's okay with just hanging out here. They don't yeah. even need minions. They should have just killed the inhibitor already. They want to kill gravity and win the game. They also can easily wait for Baron to come back up mm -hmm. one minute, so no reason for CLG to rush. No. It would be huge if they could take down the inhibitor, though, and have that extra line of pressure. They do not need to. Zahn has completed his Zanya, so he could easily use his... Uh, Lissandra ultimate to help peel uh, more additional peel for both AD carries. Right. Uh, using it on whoever dives in and then saving his Zanyas for if he gets Ooh. target swap too. Solo uh, inhibitor turret takedown if Link can get one more shot on that. As the team approaches back down to the bottom lane, I think that's going to be the case. Gravity here just has so many things to Hopping think about. Poke. <laughs> CLG having their way with this situation right now. That's going to be a 10,000 gold lead on the dot that CLG is working with right now on the map. 
And they're just kind of waiting to pull the final trigger here. Definitely giving Gravity a lot of space to work with. Not that it's going to bring them back into the game, but I feel like they could have gone a little harder. They look very focused. Uh, they look very focused on, on finishing this game out much cleaner as well. That's true. CLG has kind of always been, we'll take everything you have and then end the game, if, now that I think about it. I would say... <laughs> <laughs> All right, I guess we need a full screen of the Baron spawn then. Let's see it. We got, a, <laughs> we got an epic countdown. Ah, uh, too late. Boom! <laughs> Link gonna check it here. I, uh, I don't know. I think I do have to agree with Mark. I was in a game and uh, since the reset happened, there's all these LCS players that are fairly low, and I got Link in the game, and he was actually playing Ezreal too. And we, I was shocked when I even tried to camp him. Didn't get anything done. <sighs> Definitely overpowered. All right. Well, let's see how CLG can control <laughs> Vision around Baron. Two exposed inhibitors. But really, the fight is over the wards here to see if they can get a pick, chase somebody down in the open. Yep. Oh, there's the flash, and they got one. Is that the pick, Kobe? It's on to St. Vicious. He does get to double lift, but double lift is out and about doing the damage he needs to do with the rest of the team. Buddy Fufu does get taken out by that auto attack that traveled through from Link. The rest of the fight is going CLG's way. Gravity starts to flash for safety, and there's the Valkyrie. I don't know if it's going to be enough. It is as it dodges the True Shot Barrage, but that's the base left to counter Logic Gaming, yeah. and Gravity is just not running the right way. Fantasy point cleanup right here for CLG. <laughs> Zahn Spartan wants him. <laughs> Link, Link takes Krugs halfway through. That's one. Uh, that's another one. Link coming up with a good amount of kills on that. 10, 1, and 4 pretty much to end this one out as they're on the Nexus turrets. Counter Logic Gaming with a very methodical matchup coming in here. 35 minutes as they take down Gravity's Nexus. Legendary Link ends the game very strong with the double kill. CLG closing out on the Nexus. Legendary Link indeed. Fantastic play for him. 19-2 and 11. His scores over the past two days and playing two champions in the mid lane that NA really hasn't brought to the mid lane just yet. We've seen him other places and they play it quite well as Link did. Zion Spartan as well, still playing very strong for the team, and it's Smithy coming out as well to get help on that first blood. CLG's looking good. Yeah, definitely. I mean, even though they crushed yesterday and today, this was a much cleaner uh, finish for them. Mm -hmm. So really, really looking scary today. I think uh, the TSM CLG clash coming is just getting more and more epic day by day. The buildup for that it old rivalry I like it. to come together again, that will be a very exciting matchup. So Gravity still to reflect on these games. Not that the early game went bad for them. The moves were made obviously by CLG with First Blood, but First Blood never ends a game and they still had chances with Cop kind of getting that lane he wanted. Zion Spartan wasn't having the best game, so Cop got his farm in. It just came down to the late game. It came down to that guy right there. Just That's pretty much the story. It came down to Link making some plays, 1v1ing people everywhere. Great mid game play there from Link. Also, you know, good, uh, good team fight. Uh, shouting out the bright spots for Gravity. Uh, when they were behind, going up to contest that dragon and then retreating into the jungle. Yeah. Uh, even with the teleport in from Zion to cut them off. Good heads up play inside the jungle there. Keen really showing up on his ear. But <clears throat> too little, too late there. CLG's early game just looks ridiculously strong. They've played it so well uh, in the last several games. And they've gotten such a big lead that it's really hard to claw your way back in. Aphromoo yeah, bringing out Alistar this game. You could hear the chants in the background. They weren't, oh, man. They weren't boos. They were moos the whole time. So... <laughs>